one. The next one I got is going to be The Killer. This is a action adventure film, a uh, remake film from director John Woo. He's remaking his own film. Um, I think oddly enough, he's done this before. I think he had a, um, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it might have been the for something like that that he did twice. He did a TV version and then like a film version. Um, but in this film, when a feared contract killer refuses to murder a young blind woman on the orders of her handler, she finds herself haunted by old colleagues and a determined detective. The cast of this is uh, Natalie Emanuel, um, Omar Sy, Diana Silvers, and Sam Worthington. These are our main people in this. And for the most part, I found this very lacking. Um, it's it's kind of crazy to, to see that uh, some some directors get better with age, man, you know, and some they kind of just start fading away, man. And I think John Woo is one of these ones. Like, it's been a very long time since I really enjoyed one of his films. It might have been something like Paycheck. And even that was just OK, you know, but this is like, uh, man, it's crazy. Like, like, uh, uh, this how, is how, good, man. how's this film last year? Um, what, what was that? Silent Night? I didn't see that one. I, was, I kept seeing You know, the one that was, it was supposed to be yeah. um. It's all silent, like no, it's just action. No, it was a Christmas, no words, yeah, it was dialogue. a Christmas type film. Um, they have yeah, no Christmas and, and, um, by the time it got, I got around to be able to see it because I had a limited run, and then it hit home video, and the reviews started coming out. I was just like, you know what? Let me just avoid <laughs> this. I don't want to see my guy go out bad. But this was this was everywhere. It's a Peacock one, and I love the original Killer. But um, I'll tell you what worked, man. I think not the. The Lee Emanuel is great in this role. I like Omar Sy as a cop that's following her. Um, but she's really a real killer. Like, like I feel like Cha Young Fat and um he was um just a gun guy, you know? But she's she's guns, hand to hand, swords, like it's so he definitely expanded on like her capabilities. I think she might give uh Jeffrey a run for his money, man, from the killer. But uh, but other than that, dude, it just doesn't work, man. This story is like it's overly complicated. Like the, the runtime on this thing is uh, I just um looked it up. The original killer is um um hour forty four minutes. This one is coming in at two hours and six minutes, and there's just a lot of like slack like just for overly complicated like i said for no reason man like i don't think this is a spoiler but basically she does a hit um this blind woman this woman's there she gets blinded it doesn't happen like it did in the original film it's kind of like she bumps her head and she's blind and this, she, she's basically um our killer in this film is like yo I'm clearing a room no witnesses but for some reason she can't kill this woman and it, it, oh my god like that's one of my biggest complaints about this is the acting man like and it's not like these are bad actors i've seen these people in good movies before doing good acting but here's one of my things that i've noticed about john woo over the years i love him but but he's kind of um clunky around dialogue and tender scenes and i feel like we overlooked that like like if, all right let's go back to the original killer the scene where uh, Dumbo and Mickey Mouse meet each other in that woman's apartment. That's goofy as hell. But we let it slide because the rest of that film is so badass. But that's it's not what, yeah. yeah, that's not happening in here. Like, and there's a lot more of those kind of scenes that are just awkward, goofy. Um, you know, maybe the language, maybe there's just a tra like to translate the ideas or the emotions we're supposed to feel. It just doesn't work for me. It's goofy. It's terrible. The music <laughs> during these scenes is bad. And also, I want to say, man, for this guy to be the guy that inspired the Matrix, so much filmmaking that we see today, action wise, man, he's lost his touch, bro. Like the action in this, there's maybe one scene where I was like, oh, that was cool. And then the rest is just like, man. Er, you just like groaning, man. Like I said, like this so, it didn't work for me, bro. So so you think Quentin Tarantino is right by um saying that a director just has so many years or so many films in them before they start become, you know, declining or whatever. Tell that to George Miller. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, you're tell right. that to uh, I'm even looking like really Scott. I look Spielberg. like yeah, Spielberg. Ass with this gladiator. Spielberg, yeah. like like it, it everyone's not built the same but some guys they kind of you know it's in and, and, and also i think it's a thing too where as a director man the more you're constantly working i think it's easier to stay on top and, and really scott for his career lately he's been mostly consistent like like we're gonna see him every couple years like like you know even a guy like tony scott like like they kind of went out of the game making 
kind of the same you know they their films were pretty much even you know throughout the yeah, entire yeah. run but but when guys take long gaps i think it's harder to maintain and, and maintain the flow and even i don't know and also i don't know how you, 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 are. You, you, you might be right because I, I'm, I'm thinking like uh, i'm thinking about like john carpenter now like his last film mm-hmm. that he did might have been the ward or something like that and that film's pretty bad yeah and, and then also i don't know like some I feel like some directors that are also keeping up eyes on their peers work also Mm -hmm. tend to stay more in the game. And I don't know. I don't know what John Woo does. I don't know if he watches a lot of films or watches a lot of what's being done in action. Put it this way, man, that Indian film I talked about earlier that took place on a train, man, it kicks this film's ass, bro. Like, okay. you know, and it's just, it basically it's just Indian under siege, man. There's so much action I've seen this year. Even, uh, let's say the, the, um, the, the, what's the, 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 the um, Boy Kills World. Like, like, come yeah. on, man. Like, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, I don't know. And I saw a lot of people saying, you know, that they like this. And, and I'm like, all right, man, I get it. I love John Woo too, man, but I gotta grade the work. I can't let him have a pass because of what he's done previously. That's not what's in front of me right now, you know? I gotta base yeah. it based off of this film. <laughs> you know? I do, yeah, I yeah. do have, I do have Peacock, and I, I was, it, it was one of those <laughs> to where I was very leery on, you know, mm-hmm. and this is free for me, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm already paying for that uh, yeah. subscription, so that's kind of upset bad more you. if I had went to the theater to see it. Put it that way, yeah. like, I would have probably been more upset, <laughs> you know. And, and it's funny too, man. I'll talk about the crow, and luckily the crow was on a double feature, but I did it out of order. I should have watched the crow first and then watched the film that I liked after that, you know. But what was the film it, is what it is. Oh, uh, I think yeah, I think that was the day I saw Strange Darling first, and then by uh, okay, the time okay, I okay, got okay. back here, my local theater was showing the crow. So yeah, man. 